Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk to you about Catala, a programming language for the loop. This is joint work with Nicolas Chatin and Jordan Brzezenko. Let's start with an example that will illustrate the subject of our study. This is an excerpt from the US tax code and more especially the section 121, which defines how much you can exclude from your gross income whenever you have made a gain from the sale of a property which, which you have owned or used in the recent past. There is also a paragraph which limits how much you can exclude. This example show, showcases what we're going to try and formalize, which are uh, decision procedures that are specified by legislative text, and those procedures should be completely without uh, any human intervention. We're not going to try and formalize what the judge would do. There shall be no ambiguity, which is a hard uh, criteria since uh, law is all about ambiguities but we'll find a, a way. And the decision procedure should talk about quantitative data, which we can observe and make computations on. So let's take that example and try to turn it into a pseudocode and effectively formalize it. We're defining the income exclusion variable, which is defined as zero in the base case, and then a gain from a sale or fix exchange of a property if a certain condition is met. Note the inversion of the base case and exception uh, paradigm with an if then else here. This condition is actually quite complex and involves computations on periods of ownership and periods of usage, which have to be truncated five years ago before the date of the sale. And then we're going to aggregate them and compare them to a two years ratio. Note that uh, as of now, this translation uh, is somewhat ambiguous since we have chosen to uh, do two separate comparisons for the periods of ownership and usage and the two year, two year uh, period on which we do the comparison is itself ambiguous since a year can either be 365 days or 366 so we actually we would actually need to disambiguate those things and to know which of those things we had to take we just have to call a lawyer because this is not inside the text of the law and of course, to model the exclusion, we have to define another variable, uh, which is a capped version of the previous quantity by the limit, which is $250,000. As you have seen on the previous example, turning law into code is a difficult task. And uh, it is a task that is done uh, regularly by uh, employees of large organizations in the public and private sectors all across the world. For instance, in France, in the public sectors, all of those algorithms are in production and they compute various, uh, various uh, taxes and social benefits. They are coded up in diverse languages, which can be very old, like COBOL, and their size is very respectable. We're talking about dozens or hundreds of years or even millions of lines of code. And the US situation is no better. Uh, the IRS income tax is uh, implemented in an assembler of a computer from the 60s. Because of these respectable sizes and the difficulty of turning law into code, legal expert systems, which is the proper name of those software systems, can have costly and impactful industrial failures. Let's take two examples. The first one is the French army payroll software Louvois, which has a very complicated rules for computing soldiers' bonuses. Launched in the early 2010, it uh, has known a series of catastrophic failures, leaving soldiers without any resources for extended periods of time, and has cost hundreds of, uh, hundreds of uh, millions of euros of surplus cost for the project. Closer to the US, and more recently, the EU stimulus check distributed by the US government uh, which may seem as uh, like an easy task because since everybody uh, should get one. Actually, there's, uh, there are uh, subtle criteria to distinguish who is eligible or not to the check. And uh, several dozens of thousands uh, cases has been incorrectly uh, declared as ineligible because of various commercial tax software error or subtle error uh, into considering, uh, uh, for instance, uh, military, uh, the status of military spouses. Because of those failures that are documented, and we believe that there are more in undocumented failures in, of this style, 
We have uh, studies, what is the current state of the art for code validation of legal expert system? And we have found that although uh, test cases is the more common form of validation, there is a pattern of under-testing of those systems. And this pattern has structural reasons. First, the combinatorial explosion of cases uh, is, uh, can lead to uh, needing several thousands of test cases. For instance, when you want to describe a fiscal household, there are many situations. For instance, you have a, one children, two children, uh, 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 your income shall be in one or five tax brackets, and this leads to uh, an explosion of test cases needed. The complete review and uh, update of these test cases is necessary after each legislative change a situation which can occur as frequently as each yearly, so this puts a heavy stress on maintaining that code base, and the maintenance has to be done by lawyers because lawyers have to compute manually the expected result of each computation. In short, this uh, current state of the art is uh, not sat satisfactory, and we believe there's a need of a better communication medium for lawyers and programmers. And this is the sense of this work, wh whose highlight is to mix code and law in a single document and make it easy for lawyers and programmers to work on this document and also validate that the uh, formal specification of the algorithm is faithful to the legal interpretation of the legislative text that uh, define it. To do that, we uh, created a domain-specific language for the law and have three major contributions uh, that are presented in the paper. First, we present the general uh, syntax of this domain-specific language uh, that has to be usable and re reviewable by lawyers to ensure the correctness of the code. Second, we present a formalized semantics for this language, uh, which is actually fit for uh, the structure, uh, the logical structure of legal documents and legal reasoning. And third, we certify uh, partially the compiler of our language. This language is called Catala, and uh, I'm going to present you uh, an example of what it looks like on the section of the US tax code. As you can see, the idea is really to mix code and law in a very uh, tight uh, fashion. So we're going to take like one sentence of the text of the law and then embed a snippet of Catala code that directly translates this sentence. Here, uh, the, this example is split into two parts. So there's paragraph A, which defines a qualified employee discount in a certain case. And then there's paragraph B that defines it in another case. And you can see that the, the Catala code um, adapts uh, seamlessly within the, 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 the structure of the legislative text, because here we would be defining the same variable twice and Catala supports that under a condition and each uh, paragraph has its own condition which can distinguish what is being applied. This structure and uh, which is also the structure of the language is the has been uh, emphasized by Sarah Lowski, a tax lawyer in 2017 and 2018 and she shows in her work that legal reasoning and the structure of legal documents follows a non-monotonic uh, logical pattern. Here you have another section of the US tax code and we're going to highlight the logical structure of it. So this green part uh, sets the condition from the base case of uh, this $500,000 limitation. And then the lighter green part is the consequence of that base case. But then paragraph B showcases an exception to the base case, which has a different consequence. And this example showcases the uh, dichotomy between base case and exception that is prevalent throughout the structure of the text of the law. And this is a structure that we uh, integrated as a first class concept in the Catala domain specific language. So here is another example of a Catala program. Uh, the surface syntax is very verbose and is, uh, has been co-designed by lawyers who have actually picked the keywords so that they can actually read and understand them. But for the formalization, we're going to go for uh, a core of that, uh, that language, which is uh, attainable after several de-sugaring steps. And this formalized core, uh, we have given it the name of default calculus. 
since it's just a lambda calculus with a default term which uh, whose uh, form uh, is shown on this slide with the label d let's look at what how how this default term executes so on the left side of the default terms you have the exceptions and on the right side you have the base case so first uh, case uh, of evaluation of these default terms there are no exceptions or they all evaluate to this empty error term and the condition for the base case evaluates to false. Then the whole term evaluates to uh, empty error, which means that this thing doesn't apply. If the condition for the, uh, the base case is true, then we're, we're going to return the value of the consequence associated to it. Now, what if there is uh, one exception that tr triggers and all of the others don't trigger? Then we're just going to return the value associated to that exception. And this actually actually encodes the priority of the exception over the base case. But if the legal text is badly drafted, then uh, several exceptions can trigger at the same time. And in this case, we we'll return an error because the priority between the exceptions has to be disambiguated through uh, legal reasoning in the source code. The schema we intend for deploying Catalan production is that of a compiled language rather than interpreted language with a single source of truth that can be compiled to basically any uh, programming language, which uh, C for batch computation, JS for online simulators, R or MATLAB for economic models. For that, we need to, uh, uh, to use advanced techniques of compilation, uh, which basically amount to compiling our default calculus to lambda calculus. And here's the critical compilation steps. We take this default term, and then we're going to process the exceptions one by one, which we have to funk because otherwise they're going to get evaluated early. And then we're going to see whether an exception uh, uh, triggers or not. And if not, then we'll just evaluate the base case with the condition. This process exception helper it's, it is a simple fold left with an accumulator that is an option type. You can refer to the paper for more details. This compilation of default terms has been uh, certified within the F-Star theorem prover with a simulation theorem whose picture you can see on the slide. It is a somewhat advanced uh, version of a simulation theorem because the order of execution may differ between the source and the target language, but overall the evaluation results is the same. In conclusion, turning low into code is difficult. Uh, programmers and lawyers need better tooling to do that. And to answer that problem, we developed the Catala language with three major contributions. It is a domain-specific language that is meant to be usable and reviewable by lawyers to ensure that the code is correct. It has formalized semantics uh, that are adapted to legal reasoning, and that is based on the fabulous work of Sarah Lowski. And third, we uh, partially certified the compiler and thus raised the level of assurance that we have on our compilation to tool chain, making it a, to uh, a robust tool chain that is uh, amenable for production deployment. As future work, we want to extend the compilation of Catala to other languages. Right now, we have OCaml and Python and JS, and we want to connect Catala to proof backends in order to enable uh, the, the proof of several properties about that uh, text of the law. Thank you very much.